So it now gives me um, pleasure to welcome our second speaker this evening, and that's uh, Leah Roberts. Uh, Leah is a ULaw alumna and trainee solicitor, solicitor with uh, Field Fisher. Leah will be sharing her own experience of applying for and starting a career in law um, in London, and also having come from a traditional working class uh, background, uh, what that, that's been like as well. So welcome, Leah. Hi, I'm Leah. Oh, sorry, the sun. Um, I thought I would give you a run through of my background to add a bit of context to my talk and explain why I care about social mobility and why I'm here. Um, I would say that I'm just talking about my personal experiences and I'm very much looking forward to and enjoyed hearing from Sam and hearing about other and people's experiences and discussing those, especially where they're different to mine. Um, I think possibly one of the most difficult aspects of working with and talking about social mobility is that it's so difficult to define. I think there are uh, so many interconnected aspects or considerations that can make somebody working class or from a lower socioeconomic background. And it's not just as simple as whether or not they went to a state school. Um, as Sam said, around 95% of children each year go to a state school. Um, there are also so many other considerations, including where you grew up, your parents' experiences, your parents' jobs. Um, and so many other values that add to that, which makes it so different for everybody who goes through that. Um, so a bit about me, I was born on a council estate in North Wales uh, to a young single mother. Um, I grew up in a typical working class environment. I went to an ordinary non-selective state school. Um, I moved around a lot growing up, usually due to financial reasons, um, mostly in North Wales, but I did move to South London um, a few years after the financial crisis in 2008 uh, when my parents could get work and um, so I studied my A-levels in South London at another um, non-selective state school. Um, I decided to study law at university simply because I knew that I wanted to earn more and have more financial independence and stability than I'd experienced growing up um, and I knew from TV and pop culture that lawyers were paid well um, so I didn't really know much about it I just knew that it was a successful career that people looked up at. Um, I was incredibly fortunate to go to Oxford University to study my undergraduate um, after being part of an access programme. Um, but coming from a working class background, that was a very difficult experience. Um, I think some mentioned imposter syndrome. That was definitely a thing for me. I think I never really felt like I fit in um, and I struggled with my mental health a lot throughout. Um, after university, I didn't really have any idea what I wanted to do. I knew it was law, but I didn't know how or where. Um, and I hadn't properly applied for vacation schemes or training contracts or internships. Um, I knew that I wanted to train in London, but I didn't know. I knew that I wouldn't be able to afford it if I didn't have a training contract. So um, I moved back home at first. I worked as a paralegal at a high street firm. Um, save up money and lived at home for a while and then I applied for jobs and moved to Manchester where I worked as a paralegal at a regional firm and then at Field Fisher's Manchester office. Um, whilst paralegaling in the Manchester office I then applied and got the training contract in the London office um, but not without applying for many many other training contracts um, and then I paralegaled for a little bit. My training contract was supposed to start in September last year but it got deferred slightly because of Covid um, so I officially started in March this year and I'm now in my first seat in the regulatory team in London doing um, public law, um, which I'm really enjoying. Um, I thought I'd talk a bit about the difficulties that I faced in the application process. Um, I think a lot of people think of social mobility in terms of financial capital, and obviously that's not wrong. Um, social mobility is a lot about the money and the resources that you have available to you when you're growing up and that your parents or family have available to them. Um, but I think that there's so much more to it. Um, and part of that is cultural capital uh, that people from a working class background don't have. So that's sort of the experiences that you have growing up and the things that you're exposed to and your hobbies and your interests and the things that you're encouraged to do with your spare time. Um, and also the social capital, so the people that you have around with you and your network and the people that you can talk to and be inspired by and exposed to. Um, I would say that Oxford gave me a huge opportunity and helped me to get where I am today. Um, but I think it's simplistic to think that that's it. I think 
Um, studies have shown that a student from a working class background who goes on to a top UK university is still less likely to get a city job than a student from a private school who went to a lower ranked university. Um, I think a lot of people look at me and think, well, that's it. You got into Oxford. You've, you've got a degree. That's you're socially mobile. It's over. Congratulations. Um, but although some people saw it as the end of my journey, really, it was very much the beginning for me of realising sort of how far behind I was and how far I had to go to catch up with my peers and the people that I would be applying for jobs against. Um, and it was it was then at Oxford that I realised that this thing about cultural and social capital that I that I didn't have and that the majority of my peers had around me. Um, as I think, first of all, um, things to put on your CV comes up straight away. Um, people from a working class or a less socioeconomic the privileged background likely don't have traveling to talk about or volunteering abroad or playing a musical instrument or sports clubs or societies committees um maybe sometimes because you didn't have the money to do that you didn't have the time to do that or at, um you were working part-time jobs um and then the other thing that i would say in the application process that I found difficult from a social mobility perspective is that social capital, so the connections that you have to talk about the process and the interviews. Um, I didn't really understand until late into university that there were different types of law firms and what work they did and what commercial law was or corporate law um, and that you needed to do a training contract or a pupillage. I, I didn't know what training contract was or the LPC um, or the GDL. Um, and for example, in my first year, most people, where most people at Oxford were applying for a vacation scheme or internships and joining societies to network and boost their CV, that wasn't really something that I was aware of. Nobody had told me that I needed to do that early on from first year. Um, I, in my vacations, I went back home, lived with my parents, and I worked as a waitress, sometimes as a tutor, um, and I went to the pub with my friends. Um, I think it also those connections can just be as simple as what to wear to an interview or what to talk about and should you hide your accent and talk in a better voice, um, all of these things. Um, but what I also wanted to draw attention to is that those difficulties don't stop when I'd love to say that you get your training contract and or you get into university or you get that first job in the city and social mobility ends there, it's over. Um, but that feeling of not belonging doesn't go away. It stays. Uh, Sam and Patrick have both already mentioned imposter syndrome. And I think studies show that imposter syndrome and other mental health issues at work are often directly related with class and social mobility. Um, and the other thing in the workplace is networking and contacts and being able to connect with and relate with your peers and your supervisors. Um, I think coming from a more privileged background, you have that arsenal of things to talk about and connect with people about maybe uh, you enjoy skiing or you've traveled outside of Europe or even the UK or you've been to art galleries or museums growing up and you have that cultural shared experiences that can make small talk more difficult and make you feel like you have nothing to contribute to a conversation and ultimately lead to you not making the connections that you need or want to with your peers and supervisors um, so yeah, that's the summary of difficulties that I think I've experienced or noticed so far in apply, applying, but also in the workplace itself. Um, I think things have improved a lot over the past few years, but there are things that firms can do and some firms are better than others. Um, I think in terms of what law firms can do to improve, I'd say there's a big focus in terms of social mobility on the recruitment side. Um, but I think there's a lot that can be done internally. Like I said, these things don't stop when you get the job, they continue in the workplace. I think raising awareness and having conversations about social mobility and thinking about it, um, having roundtable discussions with staff and finding out about staff's experiences and how they can improve um, those experiences for staff from lower socioeconomic backgrounds is important. Um, I think firms expanding their practices and conversations further than just whether somebody went to a state school or not. Um, and having a more complex and less simplistic view of social mobility, and that only comes from 
conversations and discussions and raising awareness. Um, for example, I think people often talk about just one type of social mobility, and that's the, this need to escape from your working class background and the desire to leave it behind. Um, but that's not the case for everyone. That might be true for some people who want to be social mobi mobile, but that's not what everybody wants. I think that's definitely what I felt. I felt like I had to leave my working class persona behind, um, you know, change my accent. I, you now can't tell that I'm from North Wales at all. Um, but social mobility doesn't have to be about that. It doesn't have to be about this embarrassment of your working class background and the need to escape from it um, in order to succeed. So social mobility can be about maintaining your background and your upbringing and culture, but it's just having that equal access to jobs and opportunities. Um, I think the other thing is definitely training. So I mentioned recruitment and I think firms, a lot of firms already have those um, unconscious bias trainings in place. Um, it's a recognised bias that people are more likely to hire people that look like themselves. Um, and I mentioned earlier about the types of things that you have on your CV. And I think it's important to have training in place about those things and that like Sam was saying, your your experiences because they're not because they're not what you see as privileged and what you see other lawyers having doesn't mean that they're any less worthy of being on your CV. And if anything, sometimes they're more worthy. Um, I think the other thing that I would say for law firms to do is focusing early. I've tried to make clear that my view is that it's so social mobility is so broad and so malleable. And I've seen law firms in the past who focus their entire approach on hiring people from a state that from a state school or not hiring people who went to highly ranked universities. But I just think that's too simplistic and also isn't effective. I think the disadvantages of being from a working class background start much earlier. And I think law firms having schemes that target people at an earlier stage is a great idea. Um, I think university is often too late to give working class students the cultural or social cap capital that they may have lost out on. I think schemes earlier on are a great idea. Um, my final, I know I've talked a lot about the problems in law firms and what they can do to improve, but I'd say that my final message to people applying is that everyone's route is different. You shouldn't feel pressured to fit this mold or feel like you need to get rid of your working class background. Um, personally, my in, my trainee intake at Phil Fisher this year is very diverse in terms of age, race, ethnicity, and what we did before our training contracts. Um, I was personally very worried about age, having paralegaled for a while. Um, but actually, I'm I'm on the at 25. I'm on the younger end um, of my trainee intake this year, um, and not everyone has this simple route. I think at Oxford, I was. Ex exposed a lot to people who had this simple straightforward route of uh, private school university and straight into a training contract but that's not very common and that's not what most people experience and I think it's really important to find the firm that fits you and not force yourself to fit into some mold um, to feel confident and embrace your working class background and the benefits and the strengths that that gives you um, but that is everything that I have to say um, I also love talking about this topic and I love learning and hearing about other people's experiences and discussing. So do feel free to get into contact with me and I'm looking forward to hearing what everybody else has to say. Um, so I will hand back to you, Patrick. That's great. Thank you so much, um, Leah. We've had two fantastic speakers um, already um, this evening and um, a number of um, things that have come up which are, are fairly similar and I, and I suppose um, for me something that Leah said was about um, feeling about who who am I and whether you need to be a different person in order to progress um, within the legal profession and, and Sam mentioned something around that in terms of owning your own um, story and being proud in terms of where you're from and actually um, your experiences are valued and can be really um, helpful um, as well but it, it's not um, something for me for both of them was was around this sort of lack of knowledge and information as, as well and how many people are experiencing that in terms of not knowing about things that you need to do and how to prepare yourself um, when entering into the, the legal profession so I think there's probably more work that needs to happen um, within that space 
and, and something about that sort of cultural and social capital um, as well from a Northern perspective and what they look at as being um, something that they think is valuable um, rather than looking at a wider range of, wider range of experiences um, of individuals as well. So that was a great talk. Thank you very much, um, Leah.